Hey guys, we are here in Rothenburg, a German town in northern Bavaria, and we're here to check out the Medieval Crime Museum. Let's go. Alright guys, so we're starting our tour down here in the basement and the uh, first thing we come across here, we've got torture instruments, we've got the spiked chair and the rack. Now the spiked chair for torment or simply to threaten with and that's this right here. Oh, Call me sadistic. Yeah. I feel like that would actually be quite pleasant to a point. Well, I feel like if you had a few knots in your back, yeah. you could sit in that and have a bit of a wriggle around. Like, oh yeah, that's, that's better. But, um, but I'm sure it's probably not quite as, as pleasant as you think. Um, and then we have the rack uh, with two spiked rolls to twist apart the limbs of the accused person. Now that doesn't sound... That doesn't sound that's, right. So that's the one right behind over there. I hope you guys can see that. So, not at all. <laughs> I mean, you know, at first, if you're a bit tired, you want to have a little lay down. But then, um, yeah. Then, by the time you stood up, you got no arms or legs. Well, you'll be able to stand up. <laughs> all right, so over here, we have the thumb screw, which is number three, which is this one over here. There we go. I can see that a bit better. So it's very dark in here, so you have to bear with us. We don't want to light anything up, so we don't want to take away from the atmosphere. Um, so the thumb screw on a clerk of court interrogation table. So that's that over there. we have got a look at that one. Um, and then number four over the back here is the hoist or the dry lift. And that is to raise the accused whose limbs were due to be pulled apart oh man they were so brutal back in the day weren't they you know we think that you know people out there are nasty these days but i mean i think there'd be a lot less crime if they bought these things back right, over here we have the stretching ladder which is used to stretch joints or to dislocate bones of the delinquent bound to the stretching ladder now this is the stretching ladder right here Right, okay. So, just a wooden ladder with a little turny thing on the end there. Um, we have the rack, another rack used to stretch joints or to dislocate bones of the delinquent bound to the rack. Well, that just sounds horrific. Why does like stretching so many bones? It just sounds horrendous, doesn't it? Imagine the pain. An agony of having that done to you. Wow.
Are you part of the Torture Museum? Yes, my, my method of torture is I just talk. So you'll chat to me until my ears bleed. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> okay, so we found a collection of torture methods commonly used in the 18th century. These are instruments to crush fingers, thumbs, and legs. Now, I've seen quite a lot of these sort of devices before in other torture museums. You said that as well, Laura, didn't you? I recognise that one. I'm pretty sure you've ever seen in the London Dungeons where they right. get someone to sit in the chair. Yeah. They get them to turn around and bend over. Ah, yes. And yeah. then they go, twist, twist, twist. And in it goes. And, yeah. yeah. I'm pretty Ouch. sure that's that one. <laughs> but they just all look so nasty, don't they? Imagine putting your thumb or your finger or whatever you've got to put in that, you know, just having it crushed like a vice. They just look like really sadistic looking vices. I mean, look, designed for ultimate pain. It's down here. Just, you know, you've got that little... It must be a leg. It must be for a leg, so you've got like that little twisty handle on it just to kind of keep twisting and twisting and applying the pressure until your leg is crushed. And we've got a couple more of these devices over here. And they're just so decorative, like, the shapes, the way they're designed. Like this one looks like a coat of arms. But I mean, you know, you put your thumbs in that and you're not gonna be hitching any more rides ever again. So this is the shame mask in the shape of a pig's head for someone who acted like a pig. Now, what does that remind you of, Laura? I'm getting major sore vibes. Right. I wonder if they were inspired I was gonna design. say, yeah, I wonder if they got the idea for that mask from this, but um, yeah. And then here, this mask here, this is for, this mask with your few. This is the mask in the shape of a rooster's head with a hammered comb, riveted feathers, slightly open beak and riveted wattles intended for men who tra transgressed the standards of public decency <laughs> here due to vanity and boisterousness, okay. I guess so. I guess I probably would have had to wear this a few times. Okay, what a cock. <laughs> That's what the saying comes from. Oh, really? Is that where it comes from? I'm guessing. What a cock. Yeah, I guess so. I guess you're right. But you know what? When I look at these, apart from the fact that they look evil as anything, they look really heavy. Why are you having to walk around with that on your head? Well, we've got another one. I found my mask. You found your mask. Let's have this a look. This is my mask. All right, for talkative women. Oh, yeah. Can we, can we put this on you now? Can we take it out of the cabinet and can you put it on? <laughs> <laughs> for talkative women with a long tongue, maybe also for Gene Simmons, the bell rang upon each turning of the head. Oh, so you had to turn your head and it's got the bell on top so people would have heard you. Oh, wow. Um, you see Gene Simmons, do you know what I see with that tongue? Mm -mm. Miley Cyrus. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we've got another one here. This is for gossips who needed to tell others what they heard right away. We know a few of those. And if only we could, if only we could stick this on their head. <laughs> how artistic they are. Right? I mean, that's crazy though, isn't it? Imagine just seeing someone with that and being like, oh yeah, he's been talking. He's been talking too much. All of these are masks of shame. Yeah, he's been being a cock. Gee, I mean, yeah, half of things. half of London would be after what have to walk around without on their head. <laughs> Isn't that a cock you got there at the minute? Oh, this one with the big nose symbolizes the people sticking their nose in their other people's business. Hmm? This one symbolizes them sticking their nose in other people's business. Wow. For men For men, the big nose symbolizes sticking the person's nose in other people's business business. The horns showed that the wife was cheating on him. The snake and devil showed the person had very bad thoughts. So, so they wow. made you one specifically? Hmm? So they made it specifically for you? It was like a standard mask? Hmm, I guess Should so. Should make it to the person? Man, that's evil. All right, so this mask is for the hipsters. This mask has a moustache with twisted ends, horn and openings on the side, on the sides for attachment of chicken feathers, symbolizing sexual lack of restraint. On top of the mask are bells, which made the public aware when they rang. I'm sneaking up on this fella. <laughs> Not at all. 
You just see him strutting down Brick Lane. I wonder actually, reading that again, if that's someone that's attacked someone. Possibly, yeah. sexual lack of restraint and then bells on his head so people were aware when they were coming. Yeah, right. Okay, yeah. I wouldn't mind putting rapists in that these days. Oh, yeah. And, and the rest. Yeah. Now I know that this has probably caused a lot of people a hell of a lot of pain. But how cool is this? Iron Maiden. This must be where the band got their name from. Now, I know that you open up these doors here and the insides are full of very sharp metal spikes and they put you inside there, shut the door and sayonara. Ouch. Now these guys over here are absolutely terrifying. These are the masked executioners. Imagine being led to your death and then seeing these guys, the last thing you ever see, one of these things comes out. Someone dressed in one of these to finish you off. Oh man, that is literally like something out of a horror movie. Here are four different pliers used for the aggravated sentence called pinching with glowing pliers. The pliers were heated not only to increase the pain, but also to avoid a bleeding to death of the condemned person. Chastity belts, used to protect the woman from rape. The earlier opinion that these belts should prevent infidelity must be discarded. A permanent wearing was probably not possible for hygienic reasons. Inquisitors would arrive in a town and announce their presence, giving citizens a chance to admit to hearsay. Those who confessed received a punishment ranging from a pilgrimage to a whipping. Those accused of hearsay were forced to testify. If the heretic did not confess, torture and execution were inescapable. Belong. Finally, where I belong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm leaving you here. Oh, I don't actually think I can get out. I'm off.